Hello guys, away. David and Frank here. David and Frank .co. That looked like a creepy kind of thing. It's not, I swear. I'm just getting my knife out because today is a very exciting day. Windows is making noises. And please, like I said in last week's video, ignore that cable. That one right there and that one right there. It's actually the same cable. I have a brand new 15 foot HDMI cable that I haven't even used yet, but it's going up there. All right, so anyway, today's video is all about audio. This is actually a massive upgrade for me. Okay, so it's no secret that I recently bought myself the Blue Yeti microphone. Excellent microphone, I'm loving it. Overall, it's a very high quality mic. Well, aside from the cheap feeling volume knobs, Blue, fix that, please. But um, yeah, the audio quality is fantastic. It's literally plug and play. It just works. However, what about the world of XLR mics. Well, I recently came across this video, and I'm not even sure how I came across it, but I'll link it right below, because it's in my YouTube history. This guy basically compared his Blue Yeti to an XLR microphone. Specifically, this one, the Audio-Technica AT2035. And I was just blown away. I'm like, wait a minute, is this what I've been missing out on all these years? Okay, so this isn't my first time using an XLR mic. Yeah, I think like two years ago, I used an XLR mic from Rode. I'm pretty sure. It was like a shotgun mic. It wasn't mine to keep, unfortunately. I had to set it back after my coverage was done. But overall, I was pretty, pretty impressed. But the fact that I'm introducing an XLR mic into my Twitch setup twitch.tv slash David Franco. Please follow me. I stream almost daily. And yes, I'll be streaming tonight and tomorrow night and the night after that night and so on and so forth. Fortnite, baby. Fortnite. Yes, I'm finally playing Fortnite. Yeah, so anyway, introducing an XLR mic into my setup is going to be a huge upgrade. But of course, you cannot have an XLR mic without a proper preamp. And I've been doing a lot of research and eventually I came across this one. It cost me about $99. This Scarlett Solo second generation um, it uses XLR on the front and USB um, interface on the back, so it's literally plug and play to an extent. Of course, I'm gonna have to tweak some settings. Not only that, we also have a monitor on the front. I believe if you talk too loud, the uh, light flashes red. I'm not totally sure, but you do have gain controls on the front and it works with guitars. Now, I don't play guitar, never have, probably never will, but hey. Um, it's there if you need it. And finally, the bundle I went with came with an XLR cable as well as this pop filter, which I don't see myself using right now. So for now, I'm just gonna put it aside. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's just unbox these products. I'm gonna get everything set up on camera for you guys and then take it from there. Okay, you do not need a knife for this one. Oh, this thing looks beautiful. Look at that red, very nice. I don't have like a red theme going here. Yeah, it's mainly like black and white uh, with some obviously accent color from the PC, but this is gonna look sweet. Always throw that out. Seriously, it's very dangerous. Okay, there you go. Wow, that already feels like a high quality component. Very nice, we got a lot of traction on these knobs, which I'm loving. And there's the monitor adjuster or adjustment. Direct monitor, of course, I'm gonna have to do some reading on this because this is completely, completely new territory for me, at least in regards to owning a preamp. I've used preamps in the past, I'm sure, in some kind of regard. But in terms of owning one, this is indeed my first one ever. So we have a line and instrument. Obviously, I'm gonna keep it on line. Very cool, and on the back we have USB. And it looks like a Kensington lock, maybe? As well as line outputs for left and right, which I don't think I'll be using, and designed in England, made in China. Very interesting. What else do we have here? Oh wow, look at this. The USB cable is actually red. That's a nice touch. Very, very nice indeed. Although I might prefer the black cable, and I actually have extra one, so we'll see. Having the choice is good, right? XLR cable. So let's open up the microphone itself, the Audio-Technica AT2035. I did used to use an Audio-Technica AT2020 years ago. For some reason, I was never blown away by it. I don't know why, I just always preferred the Blue Snowball and the Blue Yeti more uh, recently. But this, in theory, is going to blow my mind. So let's take this stuff out of here, blah, 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 documentation, nobody cares about that stuff. And there it is, Audio-Technica AT2035 definitely has some nice weight to it. However, at the same time, it's not insanely large, which the Yeti kind of is. 
not really a downside, but you know, something to keep in mind when it's always going to be in your face while playing uh, Twitch for an audience. So very cool. Damn, that thing feels very nice. Oh, and we get a little carrying case in case you want to take this one to go with you. A shock mount. Very cool. My first shock mount ever in regards to this. I currently have a shock mount above you guys right now on the um, ADD with the Rode VideoMic Pro. Excellent microphone. And yes, I will be upgrading to the newer VideoMic Pro in the near future. Because this thing has seen a lot of wear and tear. Okay. The microphone is open. I'm going to figure out how to set this up. I'm going to plug it all in. And I'll update you guys with my progress. That's a big clock. I am still setting everything up. I got the AT2035 on my mic arm. Don't know if that placement's correct. I'm watching videos, you know, from other users just, just, just to see what they're doing with their solution. I hate cables, by the way. I absolutely hate cables. How does this happen so early in the game? Cables drive me absolutely freaking crazy. It's ridiculous. I cannot wait until we live in a truly wireless world. And that's never going to be, guys. That's never going to be. Because, yeah, this microphone requires 48 volts of power. In other words, phantom power. And I don't think we're quite there yet with wireless energy. Okay. Yeah, wow. This cable is way, way, way too long. So I think after this video, I'm going to go on Amazon and order one that is much shorter. But here you go, guys. All right, so there's the Scarlet right down there. It's looking good. Not bad. It's pretty small. And as soon as I plugged it in, my PC recognized new hardware. But of course, it's not fully set up yet. All right, it looks like I'm set up. The mount is looking good on the uh, mic arm. Of course, I had to move it around a little bit because I don't want it directly in my face. But I watched this guy on YouTube and he was talking and his mic was like maybe this far. And he still sounded great. Basically, I don't want the mic getting in the way of my hands while playing Fortnite and PUBG and whatever. So, obviously I'll run some audio tests. Currently I'm restarting my PC to install the drivers. I just did a simple search, but I will link you guys right below to the exact drivers you need for this preamp. And as mentioned before, the XLR cable is way, way too long. Look at this. This is all excess cable. Look at that. That is insane. And just seeing it stresses me the hell out. So I will be buying a much shorter one immediately upon wrapping up this video. Okay, so the software should be installed. Stream Deck, blah, blah, blah. So let's launch Voice Recorder. I'm not going to do a comparison of the Yeti right now because the Yeti is right there. I unplugged it, blah, blah, blah. You guys know what it sounds like. Actually, you know what? If you don't, check out my Yeti unboxing and test video right below. And then come to this video and compare the audio quality to the AT2035, which I'm going to test in a second. Just want to make sure everything's up and running, and of course I have to tweak the uh, focus right myself, but at least let me get a quick test recording going for you guys. Let me figure this out. All right, um, I think it works with Pro Tools. I don't need Pro Tools right now. I just wanna see if um, the voice recorder app works, but first let me go to my sound preferences in Windows and configure this, go to recording and choose Focusrite USB, which is actually my default. So that's correct. Let me get the gain up. Direct monitor. That's interesting. Oh, and by the way, side notes, the Focusrite is completely powered by USB, which is huge with me because that's one less cable I have to worry about. You know, in this case, a power cable going to a standard wall outlet. Okay, I gotta figure out how to get this thing working. We obviously have power. The monitor is on. The microphone is indeed plugged in. All right, I got it. So make sure you turn the 48 volt on. Again, that's your phantom power. And as I talk, you'll see the green light up. And of course you can increase your gain. So that way it's really sensitive. And if you turn it down, blah, 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 blah. Makes sense, right? It's not that hard to understand. And now let me make sure this is working with Windows and we will jump over to a quick test clip and then I'll let you guys go. Okay, so I have the AT2035 connected. I should sound pretty good, right? Pretty good, hopefully. 
I had to mess around with some settings because OBS was directly capturing this as mono in regards to the uh, left channel only. So in um, OBS Studio, you have to go into Advanced Audio Properties and then Down Mix to Mono. Okay, so yes, it's technically two channels of mono, but your viewers don't need to know that because it's just your vocals. You're still getting stereo sound but two channels of mono. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal because it's just your vocals, and obviously this isn't going to affect your gameplay or you know, music or anything like that you're going to be playing in the background. Now, let me turn the gain way down. Test, 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 test. Now I'm going to turn the gain way up. Test, 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 test. Now, this is interesting. I'm talking, and it's turning orange and then red. Yes, that's really cool, and that's good for me to see because while I'm playing my games, I don't have to worry about looking at software because now I actually have physical hardware right in front of me, you know, just letting me know if I'm peaking or over modulating or anything like that. That's pretty cool. So guys, there you go. I'm going to link right below the Audio Technica AT2035 as well as the Focusrite Scarlet Solo second generation. First impressions, very positive. Of course, there's a bit of a setup process, but uh, once you're good to go, you're good to go. Wait a minute. I want to do one more test clip because now the microphone is facing me as it should. Previously, the um, Audio Technica microphone, uh, the uh, logo rather, was facing that way at maybe like a 45 degree angle. But now it's facing me as it should. So in theory, I should sound even better. Not that the previous clips were bad, but they could definitely sound better and hopefully it sounds better now. And yes, I do need to install the pop filter. So uh, you might get a little puh and a little suh here and there, but uh, overall, pretty cool. Alright, for real this time, I'll see you guys later.